Hey guys, welcome to your first tutorial on web security. Now for this series, I'm going to be splitting it up into a bunch of different mini-series. Uh, the first one we're going to be starting with is SQL injection and how to protect yourself against SQL injection. Now, SQL injection is a method of exploiting the database on a web server to make it run malicious SQL code which has been input by the user or the quote-unquote hacker. So today I'm going to show you guys an example of this on this sample page which I've written up down here. Uh, this is just a simple PHP page called find a user as you can see. Uh, pretty much all it does is allows the user to input a username that they want to find in the database. In this case I'm going to input test2 because I know that's a valid user and it allows them to submit this and then PHP will go and query our PHP will go and run an SQL query on the database which will just output the username test2 and the email address of said user which is stored in the database test2 at test.com so you can see this is a pretty simple page with a simple database query being run to check if the inputted user exists and then output their email address this is the page which we're going to exploit and now the exploit we're going to be looking at today is a simple SQL injection exploit which is going to force this page into showing us every user in the database. It's just going to dump every user's username and every user's email address in one simple line of code. So I have a WordPad document set up right here to show you what exactly is going to be going on in the back end. Uh, right here we have our safe input. Now this is the SQL query that's going to be run which is safe and is going to do what we expect it to do. It's going to select from users where username equals test1. Now this is just going to go to the database, search for the user called test1, and bring out all or bring back all of the data that it can find about test1. Then PHP is going to output their username and their email address from the database. However, below that right here we have exploit. Uh, and now this is the code that's going to be run when we're exploiting the page using SQL injection. We have select star from users where username equals and up until this point it's much the same except right here is where the exploit is run. We have where username equals x followed by a quote or one equals one semicolon dash dash. Now this part in red right here is actually being inputted by the user into the form and this is the basics of SQL injection. If a form or URL does not filter out, uh, does not filter its user input to take out any malicious code, uh, this can be exploited to run your own kind of code on the database, which is what's happening right here. Instead of inputting test1, which we would expect the user to input, which would be a safe way to use the page, they're going to input their own SQL code, which isn't checked uh, to make sure it's safe, which is the security vulnerability in this page, and it's just going to be run on the database like any other SQL code. So I'm going to go through this step by step and show you how this little bit of code right here actually works and how it exploits the database. So we have where a username equals and then an opening quote. This is important right here because whenever a quote is opened in SQL, it has to be closed again to avoid an error. So the first thing that the uh, hacker, so to speak, inputs is X followed by a, a quote to close this quote right here. That means that anything beyond this quote is going to be run as SQL. If they didn't input this quote right here, it would simply be searching for the username x or 1 equals 1 semicolon dash dash which obviously isn't a user in the database but this wouldn't be SQL injection it would just search for this then come back and say no we couldn't find that user sorry but because they've inputted their own little uh, closing quote right here that closes this section and then moves on to this section which is just going to be straight SQL now, this section simply says OR 1 equals 1. So now if we take a look at the query as a whole, what's happening now is it's selecting from the, from the users table where the username equals X or 1 equals 1. 
Now because 1 equals 1 is, is always going to be true no matter what, 1 is always going to equal 1, that means instead of just selecting where username equals x, it's going to select every single user in the table because 1 equals 1 is always going to be true and that kind of negates our where username equals x right here. Then we have a semicolon which just tells SQL that that's the end of this command. Uh, certain different kinds of databases will allow you to execute another command on top of this following a semicolon but the database that I'm using for this uh, tutorial is MySQL 5.5 with PHP which does not allow you to use uh, what's called stacked queries which would be another query following the semicolon right here uh, but there are ways around this which I'll go into in later videos but for now just know that the semicolon is ending this statement now we run into a problem right here uh, because the uh, actual web server has opened a quote right here they're going to be assuming that they're also going to be closing the quote right here but that's going to cause problems for us because we already closed the quote here which means this is opening another quote instead of closing the one that was already opened uh, this would be typical normal behavior for the web server if we weren't exploiting it this would be closing the quotes and the query would run fine but because we already closed it this is opening another quote that's why we put in a comment right here these two little dashes simply tell SQL that the following uh, all the following text on this line is going to be a comment and you should ignore it and not parse it as SQL code it's just something that we've put in there uh, as simple text and you know don't execute that on the web server that's what this, these two dashes right here mean. Uh, so this quote right here is going to be effectively ignored by SQL because it's been told that it's now a comment. So if we copy uh, this exploit code right here and paste it into our username field and submit this, boom. Just like that, every user in the database table has been outputted to the browser along with their email address. Now, this is a serious security vulnerability in this web server, and as you'll find out in future tutorials, it can be used to do a whole bunch of terrible things, like stealing users' passwords, and modifying user passwords and information, and all that kind of awful stuff, which you definitely don't want to happen to your own web servers. So we're also going to be looking at ways to avoid this happening and ways to uh, filter out possible security issues like this one right here. Now, uh, I just want to say that I don't recommend that you uh, run this kind of SQL injection code on any other web servers on the internet. I think that's a terrible thing to do. Uh, I don't uh, want people to watch these videos and then go out and think they're kind of cool hackers who can go around the internet stealing users' passwords and that kind of stuff. That's not what these tutorials are about. They're about looking at ways SQL injection can be used against you and ways to prevent it from being used against you. So with that said, uh, thanks for watching guys. I'll be back soon with another video on SQL injection, uh, but until then, uh, happy coding. See you guys later.